Hey guys, welcome to Mrs. G's Sewing Space. I'm glad you're able to join me today. We're going to do these simple pencil pouch bookmarks. And they're just simple pencil pouches with an elastic strap added to it so it can wrap around your favorite book or binder or whatever it is that works for you. So I hope you follow along and if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments below. So in this particular video, we're going to be making these two pencil pouches and we're going to have two different kinds of elastic, but they're both made the exact same way, just with the only difference in the width of the elastic. So it's just a simple pencil pouch with the zipper on the front so you can stick whatever you have in there in there, in this case a pencil. And you zip it up and it looks all lovely and flat. This is one inch elastic. And if you have any kind of elastic, it'll work with any kind. As you can see, this one is a quarter inch elastic on my little camo bag here. And all you do is slip it onto your binder or your bookmark or your book or, you know, whatever it is, your drawing pad. And there you go. So this would be awesome for the artist on the go as a stocking stuffer. You can make them for your friends. If you use denim, you can embroider a name here on the side or flowers or something. You could also do like some sort of secret message there on the back, like I love you, you're my favorite pencil or you know, whatever floats your boat, you guys can do it with these. So I'll have a basic pattern uploaded to my blog, emilyguerra.com. You can find it under the patterns tab and just print out that and the supply list from there, but the instructions will be here on this video. So on to the video. So setting aside our elastic, we're going to put it over here on this pile. We are going to take our fabric here and we're going to sew it onto our zipper. Now, if you've seen any of my zipper bags, I'll put a link up here on the right hand side so you can see it, one of the I cards. Uh, link to my zipper bag videos and it's the exact same way. So the right side of the zipper faces the right side of the fabric and you want to line it up so that the edge of your fabric meets goes along this edge. It seems kind of backwards but this is how you do this. And then you pin it in place Because what you're going to do, you're going to sew down this edge right here. See the zipper teeth right here? You're going to sew down this side, right here where my pins are. And then you're going to flip it out like this and iron it flat. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so here is the bag so far. I'm going to snip the strings here. So what I did is I sewed it on. I ironed it flat and then I top stitch right across the top here so that the bag would lay flat. So see there's where I top stitched right here. So I did another line of stitching right there. Oop, I'm gonna put you right there. Right there. See it? Just right across. And what that does so what the top stitching does, it has everything stitched down so that it won't pop up. So when you open up your bag, it won't get in the way and it's all laid down flat. So now that I have all that done, I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side. So I'm going to lay my fabric over like this and I'm going to match up my edges right here and my edges right here and pin it in place. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to stitch right across the same place that I stitched on the other side. Okay, now that I have that seam sewn right here across the top, I have my edges lined up here and my edges are mostly lined up. They're lined up on one side but not necessarily the other. Sometimes your fabric stretches and that's okay in this bag. So what we're going to do next, we're going to iron this flat and top stitch it. But I want to show you why 
we have such a long zipper. In order to lay the fabric out so that we can iron this side flat, as you can see here, it's really narrow. There's no way I'm going to be able to get an iron in there or anything like that, which is why we have the long zipper. So I'm going to unzip it all the way down. And so now, now I have it opened enough that I can go back. I can iron this side flat like that. I can go back and iron it. And now I can also go back and I can top stitch the top just like that. So I'm going to go iron it flat and I'm going to top stitch it just like this side. And then I'll be right back. Okay, now that I have both sides, iron down and top stitched. This is what this is what what it should look like. Now it's a small little bag so we don't have to worry about that. So the next thing we need to do is figure out our middle. So we want our zipper to line up in the middle and right in the middle down the back. So it needs to be about an inch and I just use my thumbs. My thumb I measure by my thumbs and my knuckles so I know I don't have a lot of light here but my thumb between my th my edge of my thumb and my fingertip is around an inch so when I measure I usually measure my thumbs and it's, it gives me a guesstimate on how how much I you know so if you see me doing this all the time with my thumbs I do a lot of measuring with my thumbs. So right here, we want our zipper in the middle and so I'm just feeling with my thumbs, kind of eyeballing it with my knuckles, where the middle is. And if you want to get real technical about it, it should be about an inch on each side of the zipper. So if you're not, if, and I said around an inch, it doesn't have to be precisely an inch. just as long as it's the same on both sides. So once you have your zipper in the middle or as close to the middle as you can get, as long as it's mostly even on each side, so it's just under an inch on each side of the zipper for this particular bag, we are going to iron the sides flat here. Okay, so now that we have everything pressed down, top stitched and ironed flat, and our zipper is about as in the middle of our bag as we can possibly get it. For this particular bag, there's a little less than an inch on each side. And it looks a little wider on one side than it does the other because I'm, I'm not sure what exactly I did wrong here, but it's not in the middle. It's wider here than it is over here, and so I just have it in the middle as much as I could get it. And it's just under an inch on each side. So now we're going to take it and we're going to flip it inside out because this is where we're going to start sewing our seams in together. And this is also where the reason why I had you put creases right here with an iron is because we need to find our middle spot in the middle here and we're going to mark it and pin it so that when it times to put the elastic on we can center our elastic with that middle mark. So I'm just going to fold our folds over here so our corners meet right here our corners meet just like this and as we press it on the opposite side there is our center fold right here and that we're going to finger press that and pop a pin in it and that is our middle so now we know what our middle is so that when the time comes to place our elastic we know where to center it up at and then we'll sew our seams. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Okay, so now we're going to shut our zipper about a third of a way into the bag. Just like this. Because now we're going to use those creases also as a guide to where we need to fold it here and here we're going to snip off the extra as long as your zipper pull is in the middle of your bag you can cut off this side and you can cut off that side as long as your zipper pull is in the middle 
So I'm going to go ahead and snip that. I'm using the creases that we made before, just matching that up as best as I can. So I've got the edges lined up, centered, the zipper teeth are centered with my center mark there, and now I'm going to do the other side. Now this side gets a little more, a little more chaotic, a little more complicated because I have two loose ends and not one end that's, that is done up. So I'm going to use my fold lines here, pin that in place. And I'm going to snip these edges right here so that they're even with the edge. Just like that. So now that I have, I'm going to line up our zipper teeth to try to meet that middle mark right there. And I'm going to pin it down. And here's our elastic. So we're going to take our elastic and we're going to find the middle. So we're just going to fold it in half and mark our middle. Just like that. So now I have a middle mark there. I'm going to do it on both sides. So now we're going to slip our elastic inside the bag and pop it out the edges. And we're going to line up our middle mark here on the elastic and our middle mark here on the edge. Or you can slip it in from the top, by the way, whichever is the easiest. It looks like dropping it from the top will probably be the easiest. There we go. So lining up our middle mark with our middle pin, line it up all the way across so that it matches as best as you can, and then put our pins back in place. And catch that elastic so it doesn't wiggle. Okay, so that's one end. So we have our elastic centered on the zipper and our middle pin and even across the top. So now we got to do the other side. And this side we're not going to be able to drop. We're going to have to we're going to have to play and finagle. So make sure your elastic is straight and flat. So there's that. We're going to pin it in the middle like that. Fold over. Okay, we're going to tuck this inside first so it's out of the way. And then we're going to fold over our elastic so that it matches. Okay, just like that. We're going to pin it and catch the elastic. Now, on the sewing machine, I'm going to sew a quarter inch from the edge right here, just a straight stitch. And I'm going to go over the zipper and the back and then forward. So three times. You're going to sew through the zipper three times. And you stop and start here, go forward and back and forward over the zipper and then go to the edge and do a back <clears throat> stitch here. Okay, so now I'm back. I sewed a quarter inch from the edges and I triple stitched over the zipper so we have security there. I'm going to go ahead and just trim my threads like this and we're almost done. So, because of the fabric, 
it trays quite a bit. Now, when you cut it here and you sew it here on the zipper, you don't need to do any type of zigzag here because the double stitching holding the zipper down, the top stitching, will prevent it from fraying, so you don't have to worry about that. But here on the ends, you're going to fray, and you'll need to do something about that. So you can do a couple of things. What I'm going to do, I would normally use my serger, but because I know most of you guys don't have a serger, there is a stitch on your machine that looks like a serged edge. And I'll pop a picture up here so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to use this stitch. It looks like an overcast to me. I don't know what the actual name of it is, but I'm going to go assume that it's an overcast stitch. And I'm going to use that stitch and I'm going to go over the edges twice to make sure that it won't fray. And I'm going to do that for both ends. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So there's my edge. And this is just with one row of stitching of that overcast kind of stitch there. Like I said, if you have a serger, you can serge across it or a zigzag if you don't have any other stitches. But that is kind of what it looks like. And this is what it looks like when I went over it twice. And sometimes I feel better with it twice. But once I got it all done and I snipped all my loose threads and everything else, now we can flip it inside out. So the first thing you want to do is to unzip it as much as possible certainly makes it easier and just flip. So I'm going to give you guys a hint here. These corners, if you fold them down, like you fold them flat like that and then you push that corner through to the other side, you will get as nice flat corner corner as you can get. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to fold it over to the flat side and I'm going to hold it in place with my, th my thumb and my forefinger and I'm going to move the fabric over the top. And that makes it nice and flat. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Fold it over at the seam. Hold it with my finger and my thumb on the inside and the outside. And then just move the fabric over. You might have to finagle with it a little bit. But that is a whole lot better looking than just flipping it inside out and then trying to figure out if you did it right. Okay, there you go. So now your elastic is sewn in and your bag is ready to go. So once you hit that point, it's, still kind, of, it's kind of fluffy looking, I would just go give it a quick iron. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to give it a quick iron. And there you go. You're ready to put it on your on your your, your notebook. So let's just put it on this one. Have buddy buddy pencil pockets. So that one we'll scoot that one over a little bit. And now we have this one. We can put a couple of pencils in there, some pens, our drawing pencils, an eraser, uh, SD card if you want to. And there you go. So here they are, all done. I have three separate little pencil pouch bookmarks here. And on these two I used one inch elastic, and on the other one I used a quarter inch elastic. Now I personally like the one inch elastic. I think it looks better and I think it holds it better. But if you have a quarter inch, use a quarter inch. It doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. I just happen, this is just what I happen to like better. But if you got it, use it. What can I say? So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I want you guys to know that anything that I have in my videos, if I can find it through Amazon for you guys, I have it listed down below. And just to let you know that every time you go through those links and you purchase something, I get a teeny weeny commission. It doesn't come out of your cost to your goods, but I do get a commission and I certainly appreciate anything you guys can do to help me keep this channel alive and help buy supplies for all the cool stuff that I have planned all of next year. So just keep that in mind. No worries if you can't do it, but if you would like to support me and my channel, I would appreciate you guys clicking through the links.